Friends and enemies, welcome to the Sovereign Bitcoiner series, where I will share with you what I've learned on how to become a more sovereign Bitcoiner. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a node, the Bitcoin Core node. I've tried a couple of different node software packages in the past, such as Raspi Blitz, and it's pretty good, albeit a little slow because it's running on Raspberry Pi, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I also tried out Start OS, and it is polished, there's no doubting that. It just, I found it to be rather restrictive in terms of what the end user can do. And I even looked into something like Umbrel, and Umbrel is very popular, but it's probably one of the things you should stay away from. Not probably it is something you should stay away from if you are trying to be a sovereign Bitcoiner. So I've come to the conclusion that Bitcoin Core running on Linux is the best option for the sovereign Bitcoiner. All you need to run Bitcoin Core is an old computer. And in my case, I'm using an ancient Acer Aspire laptop with a very old i5 CPU. I've since upgraded the storage to two terabytes and the RAM to eight gigabytes. That's more than enough to run Bitcoin Core and some additional services. And you can see here that the system requirements is pretty modest. You don't have to have all that much in terms of horsepower under the hood. And this is the bare minimum with default settings. You can see the bare minimum with custom settings and the minimum recommendation. It, the space is wrong. It's much, much higher. You need a little bit more than that. 600 gigabytes is probably sufficient, but really you don't need a heck of a lot. They, on, they do list several different operating systems here. We're not going to focus on the Coco OSs here, which you should run away just like you should run away from shit coins. We're looking at Linux, open source, easy to verify stuff that it's not going to rug you. So yeah, we're using Linux here because we're the sovereign Bitcoiners, of course. You could probably get away with running this on a Raspberry Pi if you're looking for some old hardware, but given the price of Raspberry Pi these days, a used laptop is probably cheaper and way more powerful. Although you're probably going to have to expand the storage on the old laptop, but it's a good thing that SSD drives are fairly cheap these days. Plus, with a laptop, you get the added protection in the event of a power failure because the laptop should have a functioning battery in it. But anyways, back to core. It's really a no nonsense, no frills and bare bones node. And although you could add additional services as required, you don't have to. And it's Bitcoin Core, it's absolutely perfect to maintain your privacy when matched with an updated version of Linux. And if you're running limited services, well, you are the sovereign Bitcoiner. In my case, I'm running Debian on my old laptop and I'm running Kubuntu on this computer. And I have installed Bitcoin Core on my old laptop. It's since has downloaded the entire history of the Bitcoin Bitcoin blockchain, all the transactions, everything done in 1.5 days. So this video, I'm going to show you the step by steps on how to install Bitcoin Core. And I'm going to do it on this computer. I'm going to start the program. I'm not going to let it sync because I don't have the space required to do so with this computer. But I'm going to show you the process to get to the point where you could start syncing it. The question now comes, why run a node? And River talks about it here. And they mention there's benefits such as privacy, security, sovereignty, and supporting the network. You can check out their website. But when you run your own node, you could verify the validity of all the transactions without relying on third parties. This is huge. Privacy is, is massive because, again, without relying on third parties, you're not providing them with any financial activity to what you've been doing, and you're not revealing anything. So it's everything you're keeping close to the vest. And the sovereignty, well, you're running everything, you control everything. And supporting the network, you're ensuring that everything is up to, up to snuff and all the blocks being mined, all the blocks being added to the blockchain are in accordance to the consensus rules. So it's really advantageous for you to run a node because you could then confirm transactions that you've done. You could broadcast your own transactions without relying on somebody else. And I'll, sh I'll show you why having uh, using another node to broadcast your transactions can be really problematic for you if you're trying to be a sovereign Bitcoiner. But keep in mind, if you're going to be running a node, you have to run it 24-7. So where do we start from here? Well, 
you could simply download the binary packages and go from there. But, you know, we're the sovereign Bitcoiners, right? We do some stuff a little bit different. I'm going to show you how you could download the source code and how to compile it. The question is, why would you want to compile it? Compiling it makes it so the program is tailored to your system. When you compile a program from a source code, you configure it with specific libraries and features to your system. And this is useful for, useful for getting the very best performance out of the software. And since we're talking about your wealth, it makes sense to maximize the performance of the node and compile it specifically to your system. Sure, it's going to be probably a little bit more difficult to compile than simply downloading the binary packages. But let's be honest, if Bitcoin isn't about ease of use. It's about preservation of wealth and limiting how much information you have to give up. And learning a little bit, well, it won't hurt us. And in fact, it will benefit us all in the long run. But we can start taking a look at GitHub over here. And this is the code, but the code you could download. And the build instructions, well, they're right here. And I'm going to summarize this in the description in a video that's going to make it very easy for you to follow. And I guess with that, oh, before I go any further, I'm going to provide everything in the description below on all the commands you need to type in on your Linux box to get this done. So with that, we could just dive right in and start the process. And here we are in the terminal window and we'll be just entering a few commands that's going to install the essentials and the depends that's required for the build requirements. So as I mentioned before, all these commands I'm entering, I'm going to just put them in the description below so you just simply copy and paste them so it's going to be simple for you to install or to compile Bitcoin Core. Next up we have the installation of the SQL Lite. This is required for the descriptor wallet. Zem MQ dependencies is up next. User space statically defined tracing USDT dependencies. Now it's not US dollar tether. Let's do the GUI dependencies now. Because you want to have the GUI installation of this, it'd be rather nice rather than a command line. And support for Wayland protocol. And libq rencode. This is an optional. I just did this because heck, it's, it's here, might as well do it. Now we have to install Git because you have to download this to actually download the source code. And here we go. We're going to make the directory and enter into the directory. The directory is now called SRC for source. And I'm going to download the the Git code or sort of code from Git uh, GitHub. And here we go. We're going to download the code. And we're going to enter into directory Bitcoin and we're going to change the uh, checkout to version 25. I put the wrong, it's not a capital G, small g. This is to ensure that we, we compile the latest stable version or else we're going to be compiling the latest experimental version of core. And now we could start the process to do the autogen. This is going to auto generate stuff that's required for the configure and let's do the configure now that's going to ensure that we have let's see if i can spell it correctly if we could do have all the dependencies required to compile the source code and because we did the gui stuff initially it's going to detect it and compile this um use the source code to compile the, the gui version of the bitcoin core now we can just simply make sit back relax this is going to take a while I sped things up, so it's not going to be as quick on the video as it is in real life. This will take some time. So sit back, relax, and fingers crossed there will be no errors.
And now it's done. So it's sped up considerably through the magic of the internet. Now we do a make check to ensure that everything is properly compiled. This does take some time, sped it up a little bit here. And now we do the make install. Of course, we need super user privileges to do that. So sudo make install. And now we could load up the core, Bitcoin dash QT. This is the GUI version of it. And here we go. The, it's going to be the prompt is going to be showing up in just a second. And now it's open. I have the welcome message here and it, I'm going to be clicking OK. The size of this is going to be two gigabytes. That's going to be about six days worth of storage. I'm oh, sorry, of transactions. Uh, on Bitcoin, which is not very much. This is just for a test. And now that you can see here, it is syncing the, uh, the blockchain. The initial blo block download is taking place and is starting back from January of 2009. That's the Genesis block. But I'm going to be changing this in just a second to, instead of being this prune node the way it is right now, I'm going to go to a full node. Now when I make the change to the full node, it's going to be showing that there's an issue that I don't have enough space, but that's okay. And I'm just doing this for a test. And I can show you later on my other computer that has the full node in a different video. So I'm just gonna go and close this and I'm gonna reopen it. Reopen it typing Bitcoin dash QT. I'm gonna go into the settings and click on options in just a second. and then remove the prune block storage. So it's gonna be a full node and it's gonna be an error saying I don't have enough storage once I reopen it. So I close this, I have to reopen it, close it and reopen it for it to take effect. And it's gonna give me an error that I don't have enough storage to do a full node, which is okay just for a test. And it's just, this is how it's done when it's sink syncing. Now it's gonna take some time, a day, two days, three days, whatever it may be. It's all dependent on your computer resources. Now. Of note, I just want to state that when this finally finishes, it's very important then once you have your new node, make sure you point all your your wallets, your sparrows, your electrum and everything to your node, because if you don't, it's going to go to a random node and they're going to get the, your information. I'm going to put a picture here, what it looks like on my node, and you can see the information. It is taking it from my node, which I linked up a sparrow wallet to, and it knows that I did a search on those on those addresses. So based on that, it's picking up that information. And if one wants to do some snooping and see what IP it came from, they could make a determination based on that uh, IP who has what Bitcoin. So that's why it's important to run your own node and to be a sovereign, sovereign Bitcoiner to keep the information within your house and control it. So that's it for this. And I'm going to go ahead and with the next video, I'm going to try to show how we can install Tor because this is currently running on ClearNet. So stick around for the next video as we go down the Tor rabbit hole.